Do not take me for some conjurer of cheap tricks. One does not simply make an amazing shirt. Boromir, I got you, bro. Not with 10,000 men could you do this. Bruh, I got you. It is folly. All right, I guess we'll see. I wanted to do a project which shows the full power of combining a 3D pen with wearable electronics. I just want to highlight right up front that this uses no sewing at all, which I think is pretty amazing. For the project, I decided to make a shirt which has a glowing white tree of Gondor from the Lord of the Rings. Why did I choose that specifically? Well, I'm a huge nerd, that's why. Another neat aspect of this project is that I'm going to be using these teeny tiny strands of LEDs, which really pack a punch for how small they are. I'll talk in more detail about these later in the video. I'm going to go into the details of how I built this so people can see how much easier this is than a wearable project that involves sewing. I think sewing is a major obstacle for most people in terms of getting into making costumes and wearable electronics, and I think a 3D pen can remove this barrier. I've made a few other videos showing some possible uses of a 3D pen with fabric, and the main video describes in more detail why flexible filament is the key to combining these two things. Now let's start this project by making the fabled white tree of Gondor itself. The first step is getting the size of the white tree correct on the shirt. Then it's time to lay down some wax paper and get that first layer of flexible filament going. One thing that isn't shown here is that flexible filament is super weepy and leaves a ton of little strings when you're penning. I always thought the design of this emblem from the movie was very elegant, and it was a lot of fun to make it come to life with a 3D pen. Here you can see I'm really highlighting the flexible nature of the filament, which is really important when you're using it with fabric. Now we have to make the tree three-dimensional. These are some channels that I use to run the LEDs through. And the channels are all finished. You can see that even though this adds some thickness, it's still pretty flexible. Remember all the strings and the weeping I was talking about? Well, here's a close-up of them. How do we get rid of them? Fire! This was hard to get video of, but if you hit them lightly with the torch, they just shrivel up. To go along with the tree, we also have to make the seven stars that float above it. Let's switch gears and talk about the tiny LEDs for a moment. I saw these being used on the awesome Twitter account, at Geekmom Projects, who specializes in making wearable electronics. I've linked to her Twitter account below, so go check her out if you're looking for inspiration on amazing wearable projects. As soon as I saw these, I bought some to try out and was impressed by the results. The reason these LEDs are so intriguing are that despite being so small, they still give off a good amount of light. That makes them perfect for wearable projects where space and weight are key concerns. You can also see that they bend and move really well, which is perfect for something that needs to conform to fabric and curvy shapes. Despite having really thin wire, I was surprised at how durable they were. Just imagine how big this white tree would have to be to house standard NeoPixels. These are sold by Effulgent, and I put a link to them down in the video description as well. Here you can see them conforming nicely to the curved channels of the tree. They come in a variety of colors, and I bought some of the cool white ones for use in this project. What you see here is the only downside I've seen so far. Some of the LEDs show up as yellow and not white, and there are big differences from roll to roll. They told me this is due to the manufacturing process they use, and that they're working on ironing this out. I did buy some green ones, and that roll looked very uniform. And I still think this project is going to come out great, so we're going to continue on and integrate them with our 3D penned white tree. We need it. Must have the for the past few shots, I've been planning out the various paths of the different LEDs. For example, for the stars, I use just one string. Another thing I experimented with was using cotton to try to diffuse the LEDs and give it a more uniform appearance. Filling these channels and stuffing the whole thing with cotton was actually a huge pain, as you can probably guess from looking at this. Spoiler, it doesn't really pay off in the end. Now I'm using the 3D pen and some more flexible filament to seal the cotton and LEDs inside. Having the cotton sticking out everywhere did make it harder to use the pen, 
but I got it to work. Then once we have the cotton and LEDs held in place, we still have cotton sticking out everywhere. The answer, more buyer. This is with the cotton all cleaned up, and I ended up using two rolls of LEDs, one on each side. I used another paper template to tape down the stars while adding the LEDs to get the spacing right. Then it was just a matter of adding a little bit of filament to lock the LEDs in place. This is what the single strand of stars look like, and once I lit them up, I started to get really encouraged with how this project was going to come out. Side note, taking video of these LEDs is really hard, so be gentle. Seeing it like this doesn't do justice to how it looks in person. Now that we have the tree and stars done, let's talk about all the things that make this work behind the scenes. We're going to use a switch, like shown here, a current limiting resistor, a battery, and a couple of power buses. I'm going to use these Wago lever nuts for the power buses, which have worked great for me in some past projects. This is the setup I'm going to use with only one of the three LED strings attached. Then we have the two Wago lever nuts as power buses. We have our switch. Then we have the battery. And finally, we have a current limiting resistor. And this is where you can see how hard it is to take video. Auto exposure just wreaks havoc with everything. Now I'm going to show how quick and easy it is to attach all these electronic components, again with no sewing. None. Zip. Zero. Zilch. Once again, the key to getting these to hold is to use flexible filament. If you don't use flexible filament, they're just going to pop right off. Seriously, the connection of these just took a few minutes, which I think is fantastic. They stick and hold really well, and best of all, they leave very little marking on the front side. I never attached anything like a switch before, so this process was interesting. I ended up making a perimeter of filament around the switch, then adding some filament to the body of the switch itself, and then connecting the two using some vertical bridges of filament. I was again really happy at how quickly and securely the switch was attached, and not much visible on the front side as well. One of the great aspects of using a 3D pen and fabric is the ability to make hidden pockets and compartments really easily. So for the battery, I can make a nice custom sized hidden pocket to hold it that's in the perfect location. I'm using this piece of cardboard as a proxy for the battery as I make the mesh-like pocket around it. The flexible filament of the pocket can move and bend with the shirt around it. And there you have it. Custom battery pocket in no time at all. I still have this rat's nest of wiring to deal with, and this next clip pretty much sums up how I feel about messy wiring. You shall not pass! Bonus from this build, I get to try out this new tool, which is a fabric hole punch. It kind of looks like a medieval torture device though. After punching two holes through the fabric at the base of the tree, I then have to feed the LED wires through. After that's done for each side, I then use some black flexible filament to go around and attach the tree to the shirt. One thing to note is that I haven't done any smoothing in this project, which is pretty rare for me these days, and I still think things look pretty good. Once the tree is attached, then we start poking all the stars through their holes. Same as the tree, we just use some black flexible filament to attach all the stars in place. Okay, we've got the stars and the tree attached. Here I'm just showing that, yes, they hold on in place and they still are able to flex as well. Okay, teaser of how it looks with the lights on. But first we have to make Gandalf happy, so we gotta take care of that wiring. Okay, real quick, this is where we're at. Not too bad, not too messy, but we can do better. And ta-da, with the magic of editing, it's all done. So my goal here is to show you how you can really easily clean up the wiring using a 3D pen. Lay out the cables neatly, hit it with a 3D pen, done. I was even able to add some nice strain relief to the very thin LED wires coming from the base of the tree going into the shirt. And here it is, the finished shirt. I think even without the LEDs on that it looks pretty dang good. Also you have to look pretty hard to see the wires and switch underneath, nice. Just one more close-up shot for your approval before we light it up. 
and this is what it looks like using the switch to turn it on and off. I'm going to show you a couple different views in different lighting so you get the full effect of what it looks like. I'm thinking of building it more as the decaying tree of Gondor rather than the white tree. Elrond, what do you think? It must be taken deep into Mordor and cast back into the fiery chasm from whence it came. Okay, wow. Pretty harsh, but honest. I hope this project has convinced you that 3D pens, combined with flexible filament, can make some sweet, wearable electronics. And this was just with some simple strings of LEDs, a battery, and a switch. Imagine what can be done if we start combining Arduinos and other more complex electronics. Pretty exciting. As I mentioned earlier, here's a link to my main video about fabric and 3D pens. Or if you're interested in learning how to use a 3D pen, check out this tutorials playlist, which covers all skill levels. Finally, don't forget to subscribe for more 3D pen content. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.